Hello once again from Skip Vectrackle, 6 Bravo Golf Tangle. I'm at it again with another interesting uh, Nextian and pick control circuit. Uh, I look for any excuse to use a pick, and this is a perfect place for one. I've been helping this friend of mine, uh, Tom VA6TA, uh, building up this portable satellite system, and he's recently purchased these um, mini kits from, from Australia. They're slick little units, but anyways, this particular one is... Uh, is what switches the uh, phase lines on the antennas to change polarizations from vertical, horizontal, left hand to right hand circular polarization. These are nice little kits, seem to be well built and um, have built in delay lines, which is what uh, makes the selection of the polarization possible. Tom is going to be using two of these circuits in his uh, little satellite portable system one for the VHF Yagi and the second one for the UHF Yagi to uh, select polarizations separately. To do all this he's going to need four toggle switches to select what mode he wants for each antenna. Plus uh, going to have to remember what the uh, we'll call it the truth table on how the switches have to be positioned to get all these uh, four, four uh, we'll call them polarities again. Besides these four switches there's going to be two more toggle switches for the uh, two separate preamps for the antennas to be able to turn the power on and off to them and uh, either have the preamps in or out. So this is going to mean six toggle switches you got to keep track of and uh, I said to him, oh no no, this is this is a perfect place for a pick. So I, uh, I volunteered my services to build him a, a custom little circuit which is just going to be way too cute and slick compared to the <laughs> for ugly old toggle switches. So this was the basic plan. A uh, touch screen that I just simply touch one of the buttons and it switches all the output ports instantly to configure the uh, <clears throat> coaxial relay um, boards and uh, one for the VHF selection one for the UHF selection uh, just one button does it all uh, maybe some extra controls uh, maybe some more inputs who knows so we'll uh, get started and see what happens on, a, on as we go along so the first thing I had to do is uh, set up the next TN display to uh, see if I can figure out how I want it to look and display and what kind of buttons I need for, uh, you know, turning things on and off. Plus I need the, um, what do you want to call it, the code designation for each button that I can write into the code of the PIC microcontroller later on. So first things first. So to do all this, I use the uh, Nextian editor. Uh, nice program. It reminds me a lot of Visual Basic. I think is why I get along with it so well. Anyways, um, as I go along here, you'll see how I uh, select buttons and um, get things kind of organized. I set it up using as the uh, seven-inch display because that's the kind of one I have on hand here for uh, for testing and stuff. I, I kind of use it a lot because it's it's a nice size and easy to use. It's hard to uh, keep up with the description of what I'm doing here, but now I'm going to put in the separate buttons I need for selecting the different polarities for each of the uh, uh, RF uh, relay boards. As I go along here, you'll see how I select the uh, different buttons before for each uh, four for the VHF and four for the UHF uh, RF selecting boards, and uh, show you how I, uh, you know, put text into them and and uh, that sort of thing. Each button icon has a little designation up in the top left-hand corner. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's pretty small. Like there's a B0, B1, B2, B3. This is the uh, text I need to write into the PIC microcontroller code later. Uh, these buttons, when uh, they get pushed, they'll send data out with uh, another number attached to that icon designation. And this is what the PIC's gonna see and, and know what to do with it as it comes along. So it's, it, uh, it's a slow, pro it's not that bad. It, it's quite easy once you get onto it, but it, it takes a while to get set up and then getting things looking pretty and all that. I will uh, won't get into all of that, but you'll see the basics here. I'm trying to write in the text for each button here at this point, and it's uh, it's not going. And then it dawned on me I haven't entered the fonts for the different uh, characters yet, and that's another thing you got to do on the left-hand screen. I have a library of different fonts that I got to load into it, and once they're in there, uh, there's a number for each one, and and it'll then take that, and it'll know what to do with it.
And of course, I'm selecting the wrong button for the font selection, but I'll get it straight. There we go. That's the spot to do it. Anyways, you see the vertical, I roll it into the uh, side property window as showing up now on the button. Next is the horizontal uh, designation or text for that next button. Here's a little window in the properties uh, screen uh, just below where you enter the text, uh, total maximum. You've got to put in how many characters you're going to put in. I put in 20 usually. If you don't have enough, it doesn't enter it. So it's just one more step. And next is the, um, I think it's the left hand. Okay, I was wrong. It's the uh, right hand circular polarization. And then the left hand circular polarization. <laughs> what can I say? Anyways, you get the idea. I'm not going to do all four of them here, or all eight of them, I should say, because it's going to take too long. I'm trying to hopefully keep this video short. It's probably not going to work. So I'm going to go over to page two and set up the uh, next display settings. This is going to be for the two preamps, the VHF and UHF preamp control. Uh, simple button to turn the power on and off to it. And uh, then maybe a third button here later for uh, going to the third page to check out the battery voltage. The buttons on the first page were simple, uh, what we call mo momentary contact buttons, where these two at the top here are going to be more like a toggle switch, uh, push for on and then push again for off sort of thing, and they'll, they'll stay latched if uh, that makes any sense. They're, more, they're going to be more like an actual power button, which was what I want for the preamps to be turned on and off, so they're, they're going to latch. Uh, the buttons on the previous page, I just want to have momentary contact because I want to be able to touch one and, and touch the second one and it would disconnect the other one. Uh, more like a momentary operation if, uh, if, the, if you follow me. So once again I put text into the buttons so you know what they are and uh, then I realized I don't want preamp on there. I'll want a, I want a different text so I can uh, change that and then put text uh, or labeling on top of it. This is what I was trying to do, and I got mixed up, so it makes more sense now with the labeling on the top and the uh, designation of what the button's doing uh, on the button itself. There's a lot more things that set up, especially with these dual state buttons. Uh, I'm going to have them change color as I push them, and uh, they'll change lettering also when they get pushed and are you know, switched over to the, uh, the second state and so on and so on. But a uh, little too much I can get into here, but I'm just going to show you the basics, how to... Uh, you know, more or less get, get it set up and then get started. Here I'm setting up the uh, background color so some of the uh, letterings, you know, it doesn't look like a decal. It's just, uh, you know, proper labeling and, and press it, you know, looks a little better having a background of a nice blue color or something like that. And, you know, just printing it up. The third middle button there is going to be a selection that's going to take me to page three or the next display, and that's where the battery voltage uh, display is going to be. Uh, this this whole setup is fairly straightforward and simple compared to to the other ones I've done in my uh, amplifiers and other control circuits of my moon balance equipment. So this is pretty straightforward. But of course, saying that, I ran into a snag later on, and uh, <laughs> it took me a few hours to get it all sorted out, but it all worked out in the end. There is a font creator in this program, so you can um, develop or invent whatever kind of font you want. So small one, big ones, custom shapes, uh, you name it, it's, it can be done. So you store them in, uh, in your library and it's uh, there forever to use uh, whenever you want.
setting up the text for battery here and I don't like that font so I'm going back up to change it. Uh, I got quite a few different fonts but it's hard to keep track of which is which. Now this next one's a little different. Uh, other pages uh, they're going to be select the buttons there are going to be selected and they're going to be sending serial data out to the PIC to uh, you know switch relays on and off. This display is going to be bringing serial data in and I need to display a number that the PIC is going to be sending into this one for the battery voltage so I have to pick something that's called a uh, X float it's a floating decimal point number uh, place and that I, again I need that designated number that's on that icon to write into the PIC code later. Anyways, this one uh, able this one's able to give me a decimal point and uh, things like that. So, just one more step. So that's the numbers gonna be used for the uh, battery voltage, and then I just use a normal text beside it to indicate, uh, you know, VDC or voltage direct current. So this is the basics of uh, setting up a simple screen display with buttons and uh, you know a, a voltage display or whatever have you. There's a few other things to set up there, and, but there's also the code. I'm not going to show that here. I'll, I'll show it to you when it's finished on the uh, next uh, next part of the presentation here. Okay, so here's what the finished product looks like, at least the uh, first one. This is still on the little 7-inch display. Later on, I'll be moving this over to a much smaller display that uh, Tom's going to supply me. Anyways, you'll see this is page one. You can see the uh, eight buttons there, and they're all set up for vertical, horizontal, and so on and so on, with the de designations on top. So if I hit the vertical button, click, you'll see on the bottom screen, on the bottom of the page, I should say, this is where uh, things are happening. And you'll see it says prints 11.4, actually it's 11 comma 4. Anyways, that's telling the send out serially the number 11 in four uh, spaces, character spaces. Underneath there, you can see there's a bo.bco equals 63488. That's telling things to happen. It's telling the button actually to change colors. And same with the other numbers underneath it. It's uh, kind of a four event thing going on here. As I push the buttons, you can see that changes down there and how it's uh, doing things. I can't really get into each little detail because it's it's just going to take too long. But it gives you an idea how uh, how simple everything is here. It basically, it's just telling one button to turn on, the other buttons to turn off and change color. And that's you know going to send out data of this uh, Prince eighty one four. That's what I'm using in the pick to tell it uh, what port to switch what relay on and off. In the middle here, where I've got the, my mouse is indicating there's an MO. That's what's called a hotspot. And this is a, another kind of like a button, but it's an invisible button. So instead of cluttering up the page, I can have that in there. I push it and it'll do things. In this case, it's telling me to go to page zero. Uh, that'll come up later. Over on the right hand side here, I have a text that says preamp. Again, it's not a button, it's just a text, but it will do things. If I push on it, it's gonna say go to page two. So I'll go over to page two here, select that on the properties page side of things here. And here's the preamp control system. Again, VHF and UHF preamp power. I have a 12 volt on button, a 12 volt on button for each of them. And again, as you, uh, th things at the bottom, a little more complex here. I got uh, some ifs and dance, ifs and then statements going on. So you'll see how that works. And that's gonna send that out to the uh, picks again. There's also a press event and a touch release. And there's some more code down there. Anyways. Hit the battery voltage button here, and it's uh, going to be on the touch press. Here, it's telling me to go to page three, and I'm doing it three times. There's a reason for that, to uh, make sure it doesn't miss it. I go over to page three, and there's the battery voltage, and there's our floating decimal point, and just a text for voltage DC. So that'll be serial coming in. That'll just tell us what the uh, battery voltage of the whole system is. I hit this back button, it's going to tell me to go to page 2 at the bottom here. I go back up and it's going to go back to this one. I hit back here, 
It's telling me to go to page one, so I go there, it goes to page one. That invisible one, if I hit it, it's just telling me to go to page zero, and that's page zero. There's nothing here yet. I'm going to put a nice uh, little satellite picture in here, maybe with Tom's call on and stuff like that. So that's the basics anyway. So uh, it's this little code thing in the bottom here that uh, can get a little mixed up. Uh, where am I at here? This one here. Uh, this little stuff here. I mean, it's very simple, but it takes some doing. There's a couple of other little things here called values. I think there are no variables. you got to put them in there. And then there's some other designations for local and global setups and stuff, so things don't change as you go through the pages. But anyways, we'll, um, we'll go back to page zero here, and uh, we'll run it in debu debug mode. So I will say I just did all this. I want to test it out. So I hit the debug, and it starts up. And there we go. So I um, work at pretend this is my finger. I touch the middle of it. Wham, there we are, horizontal in the uh, page one. Hit vertical, it goes red. Hit horizontal, it goes red. And that's that's what's actually being sent out to tell the control what's happening. You know, for what's the select on these um, polarization boards. So I can select a whole bunch here. These are all separate in here, of course. I can have, you know, I can't have more than one. So they're toggling each other off and uh, you know this sort of thing so that's how it's going to control that part now if i go hit preamp same thing here 12 volt on 12 volt off back on again 12 volts off 12 volts on and back and forth hit the battery voltage of course we're back over here we'll we'll see some numbers here because i got no data coming in this is just the uh, simulator mode hit back we're back to this point hit back again we're back to this point i hit that invisible spot we're back to the uh, splash screen, I'll call it. And there, like I say, there will be a fancy picture in here. So, anyways, that's what's going on. Oh, yeah, and down here, you'll see this this number here. This is where actually hex is being sent out. Let me just show you that. Well, oh, got to go page one. If I hit that, you can see numbers going by. I'll clear it. Anyway, so I'll hit this one. There's hex numbers being sent out as we go along. So, that's another way to test your code to see what's uh, what's happening. So, Anyways, it's a lot of fun. It works well once you get all the bugs worked out of it, and that's what this part of it's all about. Now that I have the basics of the Nextgen touchscreen done, and I got some number values out of it that I'll need for the PIC programming, I can uh, do that part of it next. Lots of PICs out there uh, in the world to use on. This is one more of the common one I use in my uh, my evaluation board, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, it's a kind of universal thing. It's a, it's, it has three separate ports. There's port A, port B, and port C. And each of these ports have uh, different I.O. input uses. Uh, port A has analog and TTL. You have to configure them to go either way. You can't have both, of course. Uh, pin C and, or I'm sorry, port B and port C are usually mostly uh, just TTL logic input outputs. And they can be configured for other things, but this is the one I use anyways for uh, most things, and if I need a, something different, smaller, I'll write the code in this and then convert it over to the uh, the other pick that I plan to use. But this is the basic one. So I'm going to rig it up so that uh, port B will be the outputs that drive the um, delay boards for Tom's satellite system. And um, there'll be a couple of serial ports going in and uh, oh, a few other goodies around on port A here I'll configure for later. but. You'll see it as I go along here. So this is the basic layout of what I'm going to have uh, my evaluation board uh, configured as to, you know, write the code and, and proofread this and get it working and all that stuff. So as you see, the next next touchscreen here is going to be connected to the pick by these two serial lines uh, in and out. The uh, polarity selecting boards for the VHF antenna and UHF antenna are represented by these four LEDs. The LEDs are just indicators uh, that the parts are active. They're representing what later on might be relays. Uh, who knows, some kind of switching device, whatever. Right now, it just tells me that these things are working. Uh, the two preamps, the UHF and VHF preamp power selecting, again, represented by LEDs. Again, could be relays, could be just some kind of a switching transistor that's to come later. Right now, it's just to get the pick, uh, to get the code written for the pick and have it working. The LED over here is what I call a pick heartbeat, and I put that in there. It just tells me that, uh, you know, the pick's alive and doing things. It just helps for troubleshooting and all that. Uh, port A isn't used for anything yet. That might come later. Um, what else? Of course, there's five volts and ground, and there's going to be an oscillator here and a reset circuit up here. But this is the basics. So, just to see uh, 
just to show you what's going on and what's what's happening on the evaluation board, which we'll uh, cover next. So here's the setup. Uh, still using the seven inch Nexty on screen with the, uh, you can see the uh, push button icons on there that I did earlier. And then it's connected through a maze of wires over to the evaluation board and it's, you know, the thing on the bottom right hand side, you can see the pick there and there's various wires, various LEDs and uh, we'll show you what that's all about. So this is a close up of the evaluation board I built. I have one of these boards for uh, other picks that I use too, the different size uh, zip socket in them. Of course the center of it all is the pick itself in the main socket there. It's a pick 16 f 76 a On both sides of the pick you can see the little uh, little holes, they're little pin sockets and that's how you you jump our wires from there out for to the uh, perf board to you know enter or add uh, components or for testing as you can see there are the LEDs. Uh, the IC looking device on the lower left hand is the clock oscillator module. This is what uh, supplies the pick with its uh, clock frequency for uh, processing. You can plug in anything you want there. I usually quite often use just a 4 and a 20 meg oscillator uh, module. Later on I'll use a crystal on the actual circuit board. The other IC on the, uh, let's see, the upper right hand side is the uh, TTL RS232. Uh, this is what converts the um, data, serial data coming from the computer which is the editor for writing the code. It's RS232 and has to be converted down to TTL for the uh, for the pick itself, uh, it, it does that job. Um, it doesn't get onto the main board later on. Sometimes it does, sometimes you need it for a computer hookup, but in this case we won't be using that. Uh, just, just for the evaluation board only. The LEDs is what I was showing you in the uh, earlier block diagrams or schematics. The uh, two far right LEDs are the uh, representation of the VHF relays for the uh, polarity switching box. Uh, the next two over to the left is the UHF relays uh, in, you know, representation. Then the uh, two kind of spaced apart in the middle, that's the two for the uh, preamp power that'll be switched on and off. The one lone one way over the left hand side, that's the uh, heartbeat uh, lead I call it for the pick itself that uh, shows me that's alive. So here we go, this is the next step. Um, Probably getting carried away here with this, but oh well, if you don't, if you're getting too bored, just skip ahead. Anyways, the next section here is how I write the code for this uh, pick processor that's going to run those, we'll call them LEDs or the uh, <laughs> the uh, board relays and things like that. Okay, now this is uh, the next step is writing a code for the pick. Anyways, um, I'm using Proton. It's a nice editor for doing this work. Um, I start by uh, writing in a few things at the top there, what it is, dates and stuff, you know, and all that. And next line I put in the device. This here is a 16F873. This is what I got in the value right now, but later on I'll use an 876. Symbols, they're indicating uh, something um, stating. Uh, in this case, I want to use the word high and the word low in the commands below. So high will equal or will mean the number one, low will mean the number, uh, well I can't talk here, the number zero. Next line is for setting up the uh, clock oscillator, in this case it's uh, 20 megahertz. Uh, the adcon zero and the adcon one, this is for setting up the uh, analog port. And uh, you know, I didn't say much about the analog port before, but this all this code's been already been done, so I'm just kind of doing after the fact. But it's uh, each one of these numbers, are, you're setting up those uh, on port on, I think it's port A, which can either be a digital or an analog input, and that's what these numbers are doing, is telling it to be an analog port. Each number equals a pin on one on the chip. And on that port particular, there's eight of them, there's eight pins, there's eight uh, numbers. It'll make more sense. And like Tris A means uh, port A. I wanna make port A all inputs. So I'll, I'll say number one for each pin. To me, in my mind, one looks like an I for input, Tris B, I want them to be all outputs, so I, are all zeros. There's one for each pin here. So all zeros are O's for outputs. And it's, it's just easy to understand. Uh, the next little line here is uh, setting up the analog ports. Um, again, more things here that uh, a lot of it I don't understand. I, you know, I look it up in the compiler manual, it tells me to do things like this. You need stuff like this for the analog ports to work. Uh, these are a few settings. Uh, I'm telling it there, like here's a crystal oscillator, uh, uh, brown out on, uh, debug off. It, 
uh, this this editor will set these in automatically. I just tell it what what uh, uh, number of pick I'm using, and it sets this in here for me automatically. That's why I really don't understand some of the stuff because it does it for me automatically. Uh, the next part is the configurations. Uh, again, the symbol it uses the designation symbol, and I'm telling it on port B.7. These are the four ports that are going to be used as the uh, antenna relay output to control the uh, those phase delay lines or those uh, polarity boards that uh, Tom's using. So port B.7, I'm going to call it VHF1. Port B.6, I'm calling VHF2, and so on and so on. Next one will be UHF1, UHF2. So in the code down below, I'll just say, make VHF1 do something, so on and so on. That's why it's so darn easy to use this stuff. It basically is because it's... You can give it, a, I could give it a name here. I could go Joel Blow or Tom or whatever you want, anything you want. It's just easy to understand. Uh, the heartbeat lead, I called it, just called it lead. And that's port C.3. Uh, the two uh, preamps, VHF and UHF, I called them VHF amp, UHF amp. Uh, there's some other spares here, which I put in later. Um, you'll see that later on down the road here. Um, here I'm telling it, uh, again, I'm giving it some words here, dim meter and V, I got to, when I go dim, I got to tell it it's going to be a word. In other words, it's got to be a, I'm telling them the pick to, the, the number I'm going to use will be a, a numerical value. In this case, a word, we'll use numbers from 0 to 65,535. It can be a word, it can be a D word, it can be a byte or a bit. It, it depends on just how big you want to use it for. And of course, memory. It's again, it's memory, uh, constraint of so you, you gotta you know, real big programs you, you only want to use as big a number as you can as you want yeah you know because you'll you use up memory space basically so that's the setup for the getting this thing running the next part is initialization now these uh these ports up here that are using for the antenna relays uh, if i don't tell them what to do when the program first starts up they could come up in any state they could be on they could be off in this case, I want the uh, all the four relays to be off, so I'm telling that those ports VHF1 through UHF2 to go low, so they'll be off. The two preamps, I want them to be on, so I'll have those two ports coming on high, and there'll be like five volts coming out of that leg. The next part down is uh, lead flash test. I always put these in the program it's just to tell me that the pick's live. When it gets to this point, it uh, makes the heartbeat lead flash on and off. It goes high, waits 250 milliseconds, goes off, and so on and so on, down, down to down. So I see it blink on and off, I think it's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times. Then we get to the main part of the program. This is a serial out uh, statement here. And what I'm doing here, um, you remember on that block diagram, I had two serial lines, one coming from the next zone and one going to the next zone. Well, I'm telling a pick here to send out serially 9600 baud, that's what this 84 represents, to send this 255, 255, 255. What it does is clears out the buffer in the Nexteon to get it ready to start, uh, you know, accepting things. I tell it to delay for 100 milliseconds at this point, just to let things settle down a little bit. Then the main program, we go start here. I tell the clock, the heartbeat to go on. It comes on high, stays on. And then we get to the other serial input line on that uh, block diagram, which is port C.2. Again, 9600 baud. So it sits here, it's, and it'll sit here and wait until some data comes in. It takes that data, stores it in the temp. That's that statement at the top I said to make it as a word. I could have went smaller, actually, now that I think about it. It didn't have to be a word. I just have it. Anyways, it'll sit here. If nothing's coming in, it'll sit here, and this word will wait. It's waiting, it's waiting until it gets some kind of a value. It comes in and stores it. And then it goes down to the next line. If that number that's stored in there is number three, it'll tell me to go to page three. I'll do that later. So if it isn't three, it, since it doesn't uh, say it's number six, well, it doesn't agree with it, so it just skips right past this and goes to the next line. And this is where we get into the control of the uh, polarization relays. So if number 11 is stored in there, it comes in the serial port and is stored in temp as 11, it will then tell the VHF1 line and the VHF2 line, those two output ports, to go off. That's how the relays has to be designated by that truth table. If it's uh, number 21, well, then it'll tell me, because I'm going to go, this is vertical. Next one is horizontal. If it's uh, number 21 coming in, I say I push that button for horizontal, it'll, it'll uh, see the 21 uh, value come in. It'll tell a VHF1 line to go low or zero, 
and they tell the VHF two to go higher, it'll be five volts out. So on and so on. If it isn't, if it isn't twenty one, they say it's thirty one coming in. Well, then it knows I want to go to left hand circular polarization. So it'll take VHF one and store it in high, store it as high, or output would be go to five volts. The next will be low, and so on and so on. Down we go, sort of thing. So if you notice, um, especially up here in the vertical, I got one one and two one. Well, it's kind of like uh, port one is one is for on, uh, port two one is for one and so on and uh, somewhere down here you'll see it. I got one is uh, on zero was off sort of thing but there's no offs right here it actually it's it's um it's way I set this up so you don't have to have an off value you just push the next button and it turns that off and turns this one on and now we go I'm getting kind of rambling here uh, same with the UHF antenna same thing again five one it sets up the two ports is off six one would be one will be on one will be or one will be off number two will be on and so on and so on down we go we get down to this next section here it's just it's still going line by line all the way down here <clears throat> this is the preamp power control for those two uh, relays or leds coming out for the preamp power if it sees number 90 coming in it tells the vh because they're on they came on at the beginning on eh? so i hit number 90 it'll turn it off it tells that port to go to zero here's this nine zero thing if it's 91, one for on, zero for off above there. Sees 91, now it tells that leg to go on. So I can turn it off, I can turn it on. Same with the other preamp, uh, that was for VHF, same with the UHF relay, on and off. It comes down here and this is where I tell the lead to go off. I tell the delay for 100 milliseconds, and then I say to go to start. So when it gets to go to start, that means go to, we jump back up to start, and it begins all over again. We're gonna start, here we go. And it starts all over again. Now this time we're going to say on a serial end it sees number three. It says go to page three. So if I go to page three, it tells it to jump to page three. So it'll go there. It jumps past all this other stuff. It's it's going to go from here right down to page three. And this is where the uh, battery voltage is being measured. And this is where the analog port uh, configuration comes into play. I uh, there's some lines I tell it to delay itself for 20 microseconds just to kind of slow it down a little bit. Um, meter is a value I gave for a memory position and that dim statement above and analog A to D input on port 0 or port A dot 0 it's the only one at uh, 0 so that's how you designate which analog port you're going to use I tell it to um, take look at the voltage coming in there store the value in meter in the memory spot and it's just a uh, A to D count 0 to what is it 1034 which is Right now, at this point, it means nothing. It's just a number. So I got to get that represent. Got to get that to represent the actual voltage. So we'll say if it's 13 volts coming in. I'll take this meter number. I'll say the V is, which is another memory spot. I'll tell it take meter that value above, divide it by 6.65, and it'll come out. If it's 13 volts, it, there's a vo there's a divider voltage divider there, which you'll see later, and it'll store it as 130. 130, I'll put a decimal point in there, it'll give me 13.0 or 13 volts. So that's the number I want, is 130. Here I told the LED to flash on. Now we're going to serial out on this particular line here. X0, that's the designation that's on the next day on screen on that one value there where I want this number to show up. That's where these numbers come in play. I'll say X0 dot the value is going to be three, de three digits which is V, which is at 130, 130 I've calculated up here above. Send it. Then you got some more Nexteon data it needs. Send it on the serial port, and that'll go up to the Nexteon screen. It'll see that this value coming in has got to go where X0 is. So that part's done. Now we turn the lead off, and we go to here. Um, it's serial in. If it doesn't see nothing happening here, it's a little bit different from the other serial lines. It waits for, I think it's 100 milliseconds, that's what this 100 means. If nothing's coming in, instead of locking up and staying there forever, I'm telling it to jump here, you know, here. So it goes down to here. Now it says go to page 3 again, back to page 3, up here. So we're doing this round and round and round. What that means is, if the voltage is varying, I'll see it on the next display. If it's going from 12.5 to 12.6, 12.7, well, there we go, you'll see it change. So I'm in this little section of code right here, just going around in a circle. Now, how do you get out? That's where this serial end comes in. Uh, every time it comes down here, it gets this port and sits here. 
Now it sees some data coming in, so it won't jump to here. It actually sees something, stores it in temp. The next if statement says, if it's number two, which is what I'm hoping it'll see, then go to page two. So this is telling it, if the value two comes in, jump out of this routine, jump out of this little locked in loop and go to page two. So we go to page two, we're gonna find page two here. We go up here and here's page two at the top and we're starting all over again. And down we go. And it goes back all the way down here again. Go to start and we're at the top. Lead goes on and we go around and around and around and around. And that's how it works. This is, this is a fairly straightforward, simple bit of code. Um, not like some of the other ones were uh, built like for my 23, 23 centimeter amplifier and just pages and pages. So this is a little easy one to figure out. It was actually more confusing getting the Nexteon set up than it was this part. I've done so much of this kind of stuff with picks. It's uh, really, really quite easy. So believe me, it's not that bad. You do a few things, it's other uh, stuff and it's a piece of cake. So don't let it scare you. So as we go along writing the code and little bits at a time, I dump the code into the pick itself on the simulator on the evaluation board and uh, test things. Uh, this is how it's done and you'll see how this part works. And uh, of course this code's already finished, so <laughs> there's really no debugging it. I know it works, but you'll see it. So I've just turned the power on and you'll see the little heartbeat lead there flash six times, tells me it's alive. I'm trying to use an old tablet here as a camera, so I can't get the darn thing to focus. So uh, that's what's going on here until I get the touch screen to look half decent. Yeah. Old equipment. There, finally, that's not too bad. Anyways, uh, as the circuit uh, boots up, all the uh, LEDs for the relays are off from that default, and that means it's you know in a default for vertical polar polarity. And of course, I'm going to push a button. And that's going to happen. So as I go along and push the button, you'll notice how the one previous was on, it turns off and the other one turns on and the four LEDs on the far right hand side of the uh, uh, tap, uh, pr project board there, you'll see them flash on and off as I push the buttons and that's what's going to activate the uh, polarity uh, board relays to give us the right um, you know, polarization. That's how it works. Simple as, simple as can be. As I go from one page and back to the same page, You'll notice that the, uh, the, the, the buttons, you know, are, are holding on to their same status. This is a page on the next screen that controls the two preamplifier power relays. And, uh, and they toggle on and off. And you see the two LEDs in the middle of the project board go on and off with the uh, push buttons on the uh, next screen. The third page on the next is the battery voltage display. And, and this is where it goes in that little tight little loop there and is... Uh, the voltage changes it displays it instantly um, I'm actually taking the uh, knob on the variable power supply and rolling it up and down just to show the change of it all and I jump back to the previous pages and uh, push few more buttons and watch the LEDs and then I hit the uh, invisible hot button and uh, goes back to the first page which will be the uh, splash page and I'll have a fancy picture in there eventually so it works it's uh, Good to go with the code part of it all so now they finish up on the hardware side uh, i got the basics of the circuit what, what i want uh, time to finish it up uh, draw a complete schematic and build a circuit board so this is what i came up with for the final uh, draft of the design for the schematic you can see on the output the four outputs up here for the uh, VHF and UHF antenna polarization board relays. I'm using these little solid state relays. There's very little current coming out of these things, so I can get away with this. They're cute little things, and uh, <clears throat> they just fit in eight, eight pin, uh, or yeah, eight pin dip sockets. So it's four of them for the relays, and then two more for the uh, preamp power switching on and off. I've added a couple of extra things here because uh, there's lots of legs on this pick to uh, have for spares so just in case down the road uh, Tom should want to switch something else out so I put a couple of spare outputs here they could be something external like a, another relay or whatever have you um, the bottom of the pick here there's the heartbeat lead and then there's the two lines going to the next end screen to the uh, serial output serial input part of it uh, 20 meg uh, crystal clock oscillator 
a couple of spare inputs just in case uh, for future development. Uh, put a couple of buttons on your switches to do something, who knows what. I don't know why we'd do it here. We'd probably do it in the next eon, So, But anyways, there were some spare ports there to use. Uh, the very top one, there's our analog input for the 12-volt circuit. And you can see the voltage divider that uh, knocks down. I think if I remember, I designed this around to go from 0 to 25 volts, I think, maybe. Anyways, uh, the input on the analog input can only go to 5 volts, so you have to divide it down. And then there's a spare one. I put a spare one in, too. Might as well, there's spare, uh, spare ports. Uh, what else? Uh, the resets, reset circuit at the top. Uh, I show a 5-volt regulator, but that's, we don't need that. Uh, Tom's uh, system has a 5-volt uh, supply already. Uh, that boils it down. Oh, yeah, down here at the bottom is the uh, interface for the computer for programming this uh, code into the PIC. Uh, there's, like I said before, there's no RS-232 to TTL uh, converter chip. That's uh, not needed, so why waste a chip in here? Uh, what else? Uh, oh, there's a truth table at the bottom here for um, how the relays are going to work for their on-off functionality. And uh, I also included some of the code numbers that are sent from the next deal to activate this part. So uh, that's it. This is what she's going to turn out like. So uh, on to the next. So the circuit board. I have to build a uh, layout for this thing for the clear transparency for the circuit board production. I'm not going to show the whole thing here, but this is how I do it. I, I've built my own. This is Visio, and I've built my own uh, icons here of different parts and pieces. This is the, uh, uh, we'll call the through-hole parts. I've got a separate one for doing surface mount also. Anyway, start with a pick, uh, which is a 28 pin. I grab this, I pull it in here, put it in the center somewhere. Let's enlarge this a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, next would be the uh, four pins for the um, relays. Now, where are they at? Here we go up here. So I would, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a jump, jungling act here. Uh, I just copy that one, paste, paste, paste. And paste. It should be six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Uh, resistors. Where are they? Um, half. I'm using a half watt here, so I go in here like this. We're going to enlarge the screen a bit more again. And we go like so. That's, yeah, on this leg here. And I take my favorite donut. Uh, why is it when I'm showing this thing I can't find it? Oh, I got the wrong template here. Well, this will do. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just use these for now. This is a too, big, too big of a donut, but you'll get the idea. I have a different uh, different template for this. Uh, then I go to lines. I go here to here. Well, I know what i got to do now. Alt F9. Take my snapping glue off. Uh, back to pointer tool. Uh, let's make this bigger line weight one and a half there we go anyways it's like this so i'll come off here and go here and say go here and then go across to here and so on and so on um you get the idea i'll have different parts here like for the i don't think i've got a crystal in this one yeah i got the wrong template here it's in the other computer i normally do this in the other computer but uh anyways you get the idea um for such things like this, numbering, uh, well, here's a four mega oscillator. We can put that in there. <laughs> it's not the same thing, but it'll work. It would sit down here and then join up and all that and go to town sort of thing. Um, I would shrink it down. If I want to put a transistor in here, uh, where have I got my transistors? Oh, yeah. I, oh, there's a crystal. Oh, take that back. Take this out of here. Oh, I'll take this. And I would say swing it around like this. And put it over here somewhere, and it'll join in. Um, I don't know why I can't. Oh, there it is. My basic 2 and 222. So if I want to run something there, I could uh, come off the base, say, go up to here. Go up here. Again, I would like to zoom in because I can't see what I'm doing at this small stage. Uh, to go to pointer, bring in a half watt resistor. Say right there, bring in some donuts, uh, like 
Uh, like I say, these, these donors are too darn big, but it's just for show and tell. Click on there and then click on there. Anyways, that gives you the idea. Like I said, I'm not going to uh, do the whole thing because I'd be here for hours doing this. But you get the idea of what I'm doing here anyway, so I'll uh, show you the results here in a, in a second. So, this is the uh, finished result on the board layout. I've got it uh, all labeled to uh, designate what's what. I've got a uh, blue terminal strips in here. These are ones that will be, you know, little terminal strips for wires to connect to on both sides. Uh, all the resistors, uh, power going in, reset button, uh, spare outputs, uh, two transistors here, and so on and so on. This is the actual board layout. And it's in real life, if I had the page in front of you, this would be the true scale, like one-to-one -one scale. Uh, now, to make a clear transparency, I have to get rid of all this, all the stuff, all the parts and stuff, and just have the black lines left over. So this is my uh, end result for the clear transparency. This is on paper right now. And uh, <clears throat> Visio being a nice little piece of program, I just merely go around and uh, ungroup certain things and just delete the uh, parts outline. All I want left is the uh, black traces that's gonna be turned into copper foil. And uh, like I said on the earlier one, this is the part side looking down, so I wrote on there. Uh, part side, this side down, that's when I uh, put it on the UV uh, expose, exposure table, I make sure I get the right side up because if I do it this way, it, nothing's going to work. It's got to be flipped over and <laughs> exposed that direction. That's why it's nice to put uh, like my call right here. Right now I see it as backwards. That tells me it's upside down. So if I flip it, it would be the right way. Anyways, that's it for uh, this part. So I'm jumping ahead. I'm not going to show the exposure of the UV light or the developing, but this is it in the etching tank. I was having troubles earlier with some chemical problems, but I think I got the problem fixed out. So this is it uh, in the ammonium sulfate bath or uh, etchant tank, uh, slowly eating the copper off. Takes about 10 minutes. This is a brand new batch. Took about 10 minutes to uh, eat all the copper away and leave the uh, good paths uh, left over. Here's the end result. It turned out pretty good. I had a little bit overexposed, I think, because I've seen some pitting in the uh, large copper foil areas, but uh, <clears throat> all in all, it turned out pretty darn nice, I think. So, uh, next to drilling. This is not my favorite part of uh, board manufacturing. Um, you got to have a good set of eyeglasses there. I got these ones that are shown on the table that they magnify, I think, uh, three to five times. And uh, my eyesight's getting bad at my old age, I guess. So, it's one of those things. I, I use the number 69 carbide bit for most of the holes. Some are a little larger for different parts, but uh, it's uh, time consuming and uh, it gets a little hard in the face, a little hard in the eyes, I should say, after a while. This is the part I really like doing. Uh, it's nice to see the, you know, the projects start to come together now and you know, I start putting parts in, soldering them up. I usually start with the IC sockets and solder them on and then work my way up to some of the other components but uh, all in all this is the fun part so one part at a time it slowly uh, comes together actually this didn't take that long to stuff all the parts in it all is pretty simple board so here it is the final result you can see it's uh, laying on top of the uh, paper uh, <laughs> template we'll call it and it's a true one-to-one -one scale to it you can all the uh, designations line up with the terminal strips so uh, anyways that's what it takes to make the board now next step is to uh, get the pick in there and uh, make sure this part of the circuit works we know it works on the evaluation board but uh, did I screw up on this board at all we'll see so by this time Tom has got the new 4.3 inch next to the end screen we're going to use. Up to this point I've been using the larger 7 inch that's I, I use it for all of my prototyping. Uh, the 4.3 inch is, is quite a bit smaller and uh, well I gotta take all the icons and shrink them in. So here we're back on the next on and the <clears throat> next on display uh, editing screen. This won't take long. Uh, this is getting to be rather repetitious but anyways we gotta go from the 7 inch down to the uh, 4.3 so I go up to the device uh, over to 
display settings and right now we're on 7 inch so we want to set the 4.3 inch right there and then go up to display and horizontal still we're good so hit OK and you can see what happens to all the icons are all over the place so what I've got to do is take all these shrink them down you know like this sort of thing it's gonna take a while so well I won't get into that but what I wanted to show you here was uh, we'll go back over to page one the splash screen which is still orange and it just shrinks automatically because it's just a background image uh, to get the image in here so we're, we're in the fonts character we click on the bottom left hand corner go to pictures and there's nothing in here yet so we got to go plus and we add a picture now I've already got uh, let's see it's in number three yeah I already processed this picture it's a snapshot right here and, and uh, you've got to shrink it to fit this size of screen so that's the, I do that on a photo editing piece of software anyways click on that go like that it says yes we do now it's on the left hand side and it's got ID zero on there uh, the, some of the identification things for this is kind of bizarre you get, get used to it though anyways you go over here uh, we got uh, solid covers is being selected so we want to now go to image and then under PIC for pick we browse and we got number zero so we'll click on zero click on zero bang there it is easy peasy like I said though the other pages we've got to uh, move things around shrink them up to get in the screen here but I, I won't do that I've already got this finished in a different folder so we'll, we'll see what you'll see it all here shortly so anyways just want to show you that little dit, little tidbit real quick I almost forgot uh, so I know somebody's gonna ask me how do I get the code from the editor screen here into the next end display itself so when you're all happy with uh, what everything looks like you can see how I got everything's all all sized up for the new screen and then you you know you compile it make sure everything works good you go up to file and then TFT file output and it's gonna ask me uh, where does it want to go I think I want F that's my yeah pretty sure okay you just hit output click and it's you can see down in a screen down here that it's uh, doing its thing and when it's done it comes up and shows you the page and there it is I'm in USB Drive F and there's the file right there so only 1k large it's not that bad so that's how that's done Oops. that Drive F was a, a small SD card so I take that out of there and I go over to the display I spin the display around so you can see where the SD socket is to insert the uh, small drive it's a tiny little thing almost too big for my big uh, clumsy fingers but uh, anyways you get it in there and of course this is done with the power turned off of the screen you don't want you don't want it powered on to do this it's got to be off when you're ready well then turn on a 5 volts power to the screen and uh, you'll see that it notices that the SD cards in there is a bootload and it uh, proceeds unloading the file shows on the screen that the loading is done so then just turn off the power pull out the uh, eject the little SD card and then uh, repower it voila and there it is all done and pretty oh boy this is taking a long time but we're getting there well this is the board all populated now with the pick in there and the uh, six uh, little solid state relays and LEDs um, now we just got to get the code program to it and then we can do some more testing so back to the uh, pick editing station there I got to change a few things I put a different chip different pick in there it switched over to the 876a so that, that's the first thing I got to do and then um, compile it and uh, load it up into the pick itself uh, first thing I had to do though before all this was put a bootloader in the new pick so it would uh, take it serially otherwise you, you have to do it through a burner and uh, a little more clumsy that way also I have to use a uh, TTL to RS-232 adapter here that, that I used to program this board uh, the valuation board had that built in but this one doesn't so it's uh, another cable I used to plug into the uh, board itself so I've changed the uh, pick over to a 16F 876A from the 73 and now uh, compiled it and hit the program button
look at that the uh, heartbeat lead is flashing six times it tells me uh, things are good so it's alive finally the testing part of it all the pick boots up in the default mode with the uh, relays and verticals so those top four leads are already off but you push the buttons just to indicate it and uh, you know nothing's changed because it's already there so I go through the different steps of the different polarizations between the two antennas and uh, watch all the pretty lights flash on and off. So far, so good. Get the uh, preamp text icon and switch over to the second page for the preamp control. The two lower LEDs on the board are the preamp controls, so you see them switch on and off accordingly. Then finally over to the... Uh, third page for the battery voltage display. I have a separate power supply hooked to this part of it so I can vary it up and down and you can see the two voltages are off by a little bit uh, so I'll go back into the pick code and f play around with that little fudge factor there a bit and get her a lot closer in this and uh, that'll be her. And you were thinking oh when's this gonna end? Oh wait a minute there's just a little bit more. So there has to be some way of mounting this in uh, <clears throat> what's going to be later on a small suitcase I think Tom was going to build for going portable and uh, I didn't want the board separate from the display so uh, again one of my custom made bezels with uh, 440 bolts glued to the other side with JB weld and then the uh, with special spacers the uh, display bolts down to it and other set of spacers the circuit board on top of that so this is a complete unit. It uh, turned out rather well, I think. I really enjoyed this little project. These, these little Nexian screens are uh, a lot of fun. They're a perfect match to uh, hook up to picks. Well, adrenals, anything else for that matter, uh, way better than an ugly old two-line or four-line LCD display. I mean, it really puts a nice personal touch to the whole idea of uh, something like this. I think when Tom gets this mounted in the... Uh, suitcase or enclosure or whatever there's going to be a few other boxes with it, the uh, satcom tracking box and uh, i think the rotor control box too so it's gonna be one neat looking little setup i i can't wait to see it all put together and uh, especially out, out in the field running or somewhere like that it's uh, gonna be quite unique i must say so you've made it this far well thanks for the patience and putting up with me <laughs> it was a very fun little project. I really enjoy building these little Nexians and stuff. So, anyways, again, thanks for watching. Sammy's reads again from Skip, Vector Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tango.